I'm Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician. Go ahead and read the disclaimer. Go ahead and pause your video if you need to. Okay, so today I'm talking about distinction between vestibular migraines as well as Meniere's disease. Simply, Meniere's disease oftentimes presents with rotational vertigo lasting for uh, at least minutes, if not hours. Frequently, there's vomiting with attacks. There can be pressure in the ear, ringing in the ear, fullness in the ear. Comparing and contrasting with vestibular migraines, typically there's vertigo, which can be five minutes to 72 hours. There can be a unilateral headache, pulsating headache, uh, light and sound sensitivity. Unfortunately, the there's tremendous overlap, and we find that upwards of 48% of Meniere's disease patients actually fulfill the criteria for having vestibular migraines. So it becomes confusing for patients and doctors, and in a quest to find biomarkers to delineate one condition versus another. Uh, scientists are looking more and more at MRI scans. Uh, in the past, we've looked at gadolinium-enhanced MRI scans of the inner ear, looking at swelling of the inner ear in Meniere's patients because it's thought to be a disease of swelling of the endolymphatic sac, also referred to as endolymphatic hydrops, where there's either too much fluid being produced in the endolymphatic system or a lack of drainage through the duct. Nonetheless, um, in this study, uh, researchers, in essence, looked at a different variable. Uh, let me hide that one. They were looking at the distance, and I'll show you the MRI scan picture. I think I have it here. They were looking at the distance of some anatomical features of the inner ear in Meniere's disease patients versus vestibular migraines. And they found that the vertical portion of the posterior semicircular canal had a lesser distance to basically the posterior fossa. Uh, for those who need a little more anatomy, you can, um, sorry, I should have minimized the other one. Uh, let's see here. Give me one second. Oh, I'm at the end. Well, uh, here we go. So you can pause the video here. You can look at the anatomy and you can see the angles of the different semicircular canals. And in essence, the posterior semicircular canal, they saw, saw the vertical portion of that distance versus uh, the posterior fossa distance, the distance between those two structures rather, was decreased in Meniere's disease. So that is interesting as compared to um, vestibular migraine patients. The differentiation though was not hugely significant. Um, so they didn't feel that this should become the new diagnostic classification um, for differentiating between these two, but it is one piece of information closer for doctors and patients to differentiating between the two conditions because again, there is tremendous clinical and physiological overlap uh, between these. And I will put this slide in. This is a citation for the anatomical slide that I just gave you. So I hope this video is helpful. I'll have more quick tidbits coming in the future. And go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the notification bells. I'm going to try and be bringing you videos more often. And thank you so much.